For most teenagers, high school is one of the greatest time in their life. But for others, it's a struggle. It's another planet with a confusing language. 10% of all public school students are English as a second language learners, ESL, meaning that they have limited English proficiency. Everyone knows an important part of learning is a teacher. The standard classroom ratio across America is one teacher for every 15 students. But less than 1% of public school teachers are ESL instructors. That means that there is one ESL instructor for every 150 ESL students. Teachers will develop a lesson plan. All lesson plans, typically, uh, teachers should make learning personal, personalized. And so with that personalization, our teachers are able to specifically hone in utilizing those instructional strategies to help those students develop. Uh, every so often our students are, are assessed to see whether or not where they came in, where they are, and where they need to go are improving. So at the end of the day we're trying to make sure our students are uh, demonstrating some type of growth. Some teachers don't even speak Spanish to help or explain assignments to ESL students, so they must ask other students to guide them. When I have a student that speaks Spanish, um, what I try to do is I try to use um, words that are common words to make sure that they're understanding me. Um, I also try to use my students that are um, fluent in both languages to assist me with that student. Sometimes I feel uh, a little slower than the other students because I can't understand some words. Like uh, when my teacher writes something on the board and I don't understand what means the word. So sometimes I feel slow than the others. Okay, everyone, put everything away. You have a pop quiz. The most dreaded words to a high school no. student. It's already hard enough to take a quiz as a regular student, but for one whose second language is English, it's sometimes near impossible to get a good score without guidance. Yes, I do speak Spanish, so uh, the biggest um, thing that you want to do with a, a student who doesn't really speak English is finding a way to communicate or break that barrier in which he doesn't understand between doesn't understand the language. So. Um, Obviously, speaking Spanish is a big benefit when you can actually communicate with a, with a student who doesn't speak English. Um, but I try to correlate as much as they can understand in Spanish and try to give them, you know, uh, nonverbal communication um, techniques like pictures and different signs to see if we can um, easily communicate. Um, once we establish that, um, I try to help them, for example, our bones that we use in class, um, try to get them to see if they know the bones in Spanish, and then we try to translate that Spanish word into English. Actually, uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a country where I had to actually learn Spanish. So, when I run into a student that doesn't speak English, if it's Spanish, then we're good. And if it's Romanian, then I don't know about that. Maybe we'll speak in signs. Yo preparo para los exámenes por estudiar. Sigo estudiando una hora más en la noche cada día una semana antes o unas semanas más dependiendo en qué importante es el examen. The ACT and SAT are tough tests for all students, and their time and verbal demands make them especially challenging for English language learners. Without passing these tests, how are these students able to get into college? Without passing any tests in general, how will these students be able to graduate and acquire the American dream?